trains, on the planes, all of those guys. It's my great pleasure to welcome three former great White Sox players. To my immediate left, a Gold Glove center fielder, Jim Landis, who was just talking about how many times he ran into the left fielder, Minnie Minoso, as they chased <laughs> balls together. Uh, in the middle, we have Billy Pierce, a White Sox fan favorite and one of the most dominant pitchers of this era. And in the three hole right there next to him, another exciting outfielder, both at the bat and in the field, Jim Rivera, who was on those 59 Go-Go White Sox.
from or anything like that. He was one of us, and he accepted it that way, and we did too. He was just a great asset for our team and for Chicago. Only one thing, though, when he first came over, I couldn't understand him at all. <laughs> <laughs> Some people still think that. <laughs> Jim Rivera, when, when you think back to what Minnie was in terms of the White Sox, you know because you were here every day with him, but what did other players throughout the league say to you about Minnie, the ball player? Well, they said they had to worry about him. They said they had to worry about him because when he got on base, he's going to steal, come home on a single, and win the game. Minnie was a hustler, a great hustler. And, and for me to say, he was my friend, he was more than my friend. He was like my brother, and I loved him. Billy, yeah. Billy, what, what did players tell you? What did pitchers, what, we know that pitchers all talk amongst themselves today, probably back in the day as well. What did pitchers tell you about? I personally didn't associate with those enemies. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the pitchers all were literally of many because they wanted to the pitch him inside, and he would get hit. I mean, that's one thing that uh, was mentioned by one of the statisticians. It's important. Many would get on base any way he could, whether he would get hit with the ball, whether he would walk, or another thing. He would always go first to third, second to home, and that's what really benefited our ball club. We were on the run all the time, and the opposition, with having many on base, they had to be hustling, and that's when you make mistakes. So, and he, he helped us in so many ways. Jim, we, a, we actually needed that because at the time we weren't scoring too many runs. <laughs> you know, actually, in 1959, I will speak in one mind, we won 31 run, one run ball games. So you know how, how we had to play. Billy, he wasn't on the Go Go White Sox, the, the 1959. Oh, no. He was on the Go Go. He probably was the reason that that nickname well, That's why came. it came. The Go Go thing started in 51. I mean, we had Busby. We we had Minnie, and Minnie was the base stealer at that time before Louie came along. But that's when Go Go started. Because the White Sox, as somebody expressed earlier, in the 30s and 40s were kind of a dead team, an older team and a dead team. I know I was with Detroit, and I watched uh, a ball bounce in front of an outfielder who backed up to catch it in 1948. And I was saying, my gracious, I got traded to this club. <laughs> but uh, I said, all the trades we made, speed, and uh, it just developed. And we ended up with these three guys, Minnie and Jim and Jim. Uh, nothing bounced in front of them. They caught everything. And for a pitcher, that's what you want. And even though he wasn't on the 59 American League Championship Club, what impact did he have on that club? Well, it was still uh, a, the same type of a ball club. You know, just run, steal bases, and do that. Jimmy was doing a lot of the running at that time. Uh, in the third slot, and uh, that came in very handy. We always remembered that. Of course, I always kid many. I said, well, we traded you for one reason, so we could get the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and he is wearing a 2005 one right now. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, no, many just was so great an asset to us in all, in all ways, and we missed him, no doubt about it, and I know the ball club, when he came back here, just by the time I was leaving, uh, he, uh, he, he added something to a ball club. When in the, in the clubhouse, he was always full of life. On the bench, he wanted to win. And it's the type of ball player you want to play with. We actually had two leaders, and I, I consider Nolly Fox one of the greatest of all. But this guy were also was a, a leader. They didn't bark and all that, but he followed. Jim, give me a reason. Give me the reason that Minnie Manosa belongs in the Hall of Fame. Well, after seeing all the other people that were going into the Hall of Fame and their records, then I saw Minoso, so I couldn't believe it. And I know he was very much deserving of it. He should be in the Hall of Fame. And I would vote for him any time. You know what the trouble with the Hall of Fame is? How many people know what his stats are? I wish more would make a big difference. No, 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 say, somebody uh, mentioned this a little before. They put, to me, way too much emphasis on the home run. It's important, but give me the guy that hits 300 and doesn't hit quite as many home runs, but can still hit them. Steal bases, uh, cut off men, do everything right. And you can have that guy that maybe hits 40 home runs and hits 250. I 
mean, he isn't going to help you that much. He isn't going to move monitors around. And there's a lot of things he does not do that many could do. And there's no question he belongs in the Hall of Fame. Billy, let's say that you take his 11-year career and you drop it in right now over the course of the last 11 years. Does that put him in the Hall? Absolutely. Without, without a doubt. In fact, nowadays, for some reason, the guy can hit 350 and the next year hit 280. I don't know what's going on. But people are more consistent back in those days. Many is one of them. You can see his, his averages stayed very close all the time. He was always in the ball game, getting hits, getting on base, scoring runs. That's what you want. But you know, people don't realize in our day, the ball player wasn't a stat man. We didn't care about stats. All we cared really was about winning. Well, I'll give you an example. A few years back, uh, somebody said, no, you shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Well, I went to something until I got a T-shirt and showed this guy who was a ball player. He said, oh, my God, that guy should be in the Hall of Fame. Well, we're going through particularly the same thing, not knowing, you know, I play with him, I love him, and all that. But who did the stats? You know, play to win. Get them out. Yeah, get the stats up. You play to win. Well, the Hall of Fame basically should be based on everything. I mean, I mean, we talk about uh, the racial situation. That was never a problem with many. It went out of question. And I don't think that would be to get any votes that way. And I don't think he'd want them that way. If many wants votes, he loves baseball. He wants votes for what he accomplished. And he accomplished everything a ball player could accomplish. Well, three compelling arguments from three teammates. I want to thank you all. Great honor to have all of you here. That's the, uh, the teammate portion. We're going to next uh, bring up